Special message for all you charitable organizations, or any kind of an organization, actually. If you'd like to bring the thrills and excitement of Bruiser Bedlam Wrestling to your community to raise some funds, here's a great way. We'll bring all the stars in. If you'd like some more information on that, write to the address or call the phone number on your screen. Bruiser Bedlam, 151 West Jefferson, Suite 514, Detroit, 48226. Telephone area code 313-537-9796. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one fall, 15-minute time limitation, and this is a tag team matchup. Introducing, from parts unknown, weighing 348 pounds, here is the Hangman. And his partner, also from Parts Unknown, weighing at 250 pounds, I give you the Black Saint. And their opponents, weighing 232 pounds, from Mexico City, Mexico, he's known as the Superman. here is El Bracero. And his partner weighing 230 pounds from Chatham, Ontario. Let's hear it for Rick Bolton. Bolton, tag team matchup. This should be a great match, Bruiser. Come to guys. Yes, man. Have you ever been to Parts Unknown? No, I, I understand they all wear masks in that town. Is that it? You ever been there, huh? It must be in Canada. It must be. <laughs> Rick Bolton on the outside, El Bracero starting for his team, the Masked Men. It's the Hangman, the larger of the two. Black Saint starting off against El Bracero, Supermax, the high flyer from Mexico City. Well, you see moves from El Bracero that just dazzle you. You better, you better believe it, Terry. He's the finest Spanish wrestler, or any kind of wrestler. He's one of the top. And of course, El Bracero is after some tougher competition. Wants to work his way up to those main events. Certainly, he's qualified for it. He's taking his time, though. He's a patient man. Well, he used to be a little bit smaller than he is now, but he's a full-fledged heavyweight now. Off the ropes comes the Black Saint over the top. Bracero, whoa. Surprised me and certainly caught this Black Saint off guard. The tag is made. Here comes the Hangman Big Man over 300 pounds. Bracero tags off to Rick Bolton in the other corner. I yep. think, I think Bracero did the right thing. Tagging out? Yeah, just let, let the hangman wear himself out a little. Obviously strategy, an integral part of a successful tag team combination. Well, he might not wear himself out. The hangman's got quite a reputation. The oh, Black Saint. With a boot from the outside, referee warning the team about the double teaming tactics. Bolton's coming back though. Oh, he got his man over. Took him over in that flying bear. Reverse chin lock applied by Rick Bolton. Bolton's an up and comer. Right, he's, he's improving every week. He's been at it a few years. Bracero in over the top ropes. Bracero, very, very stylish wrestler, as you will see. Takes the big man down with a Fist into the midsection. Al Bracero, the Supermax. Uh -huh. The fans flock to this guy. They love to see him in the ring. He is just non-stop action. So quick and so, so very effective. Let's see what we can do with the Black Saint. Reversal, Bracero, though. Oh, that's thinking. That's experience. Drop kick. The Black Saint is down. Bracero is on a roll. Another drop kick. The Black Saint's going to take a break. And Bracero, oh my lord, right through the ring. Right into the table. Yeah, oh, there you Terry. Good lord, I have it up. Oh, I thought they were coming oh, right on top of it. Oh, Bracero just came sailing right through the middle of the top rope. What did he catch him with, a headbutt or a shoulder block there? I don't know, I was running for my life. That was about under the table. Boy. Boy, what a wrestler he is. Well, he was taking quite a chance with that. Right, I thought he was going to come right at me. A lot of flash and dazzle from the Supermax. I tell you, right, one second there, I was, I was thinking about I was going to have to hit him to defend myself. Yeah, hail it out here. 
Elm Bracero, things slowing down just a bit. Bracero facing a much bigger opponent. He's used to that, though. I am a man with quite a devious, dangerous reputation. Max Bracero. Charged in, but there was nobody there. I think they must outweigh him. He must weigh as much as both of his opponents together. Colton coming down to the right and left leg of the hangman. A second time he does it. Once again, the tag is made. Oh, Bracero back into action. What's the matter with the referee? All oh, over the top rope the tag must be made. A technicality, but... Al Thomas is a good referee. Yeah, he is. He is. Bracero taking off now. We've got all four of them in there. Double trouble. And head on collision of the two masked men. Bracero with a flying head scissors takes the back side over. A second flying head scissors. Bolton working on the mask in the other corner. Bracero with a scoop slam and going out. Oh, he's going to go for it. He's climbing the top rope. There he goes, super fly. Anchors away. Oh. Isn't that guy amazing, though? He got it. The round of applause that they're getting from the crowd of attendance here at the beautiful Vermeer Center in Sterling Heights, Michigan. That's an amazing. The winners by a Superfly and Body Press, El Bracero and Rick Bolton. That's what Bracero calls that move. The ring announcer jogged my memory. Coming from the top, the Superfly he calls that. Let's see it again. As you can see, Rick Bolton keeping the hangman busy in the left-hand side of the screen. Big body slam sets the man up. Bracero on his way out. There he goes. One, two, three. All the way to the top. Here comes the superfly. Bombs away. Great shot from the camera. And that was all it took, understandably, for Bracero and Bolton to emerge victorious. The one and only Dr. Jerry Graham coming up in the gallery. Also the great Wojo against Chris Carter later on the program as we return. Well, we have another question, Hal? Yes, we do, from rather far afield, too, Gaylord, Michigan. Kevin Palm of Gaylord, Michigan, wants to know, how can I obtain photos of my favorite stars? Well, I guess the best way to do that is uh, you can send me a letter. It's $2 per photo. Send the money you need for the stars you want, and I'll pass it on to the proper people. If they don't have the particular pictures you want, they'll send you back the money, plus the pictures if they have the ones that you want. You know, there's going to be a certain pattern to these questions, I think. Here's one from William R. McConnell of Huron, Ohio. And he says, I would like to contact Magnificent Mimi, Candy Devine, Taylor Thomas, and Rockin' Robin. How do I do it? Well, we're going to change the name of the program. <laughs> we're going to change it to the sex hour or something. Uh, I know that a lot of the fans out there, particularly the ones that watch Glow and pa Pow, do it only to look at the ladies. That's the only reason, because you're not a wrestling fan if you're watching this type of program. But I guess it goes beyond that. I guess the girls watch the wrestlers, and they're all well-developed fellows, and they're young, and they're good-looking, and they know it's a glamorous life, and they want to meet these people, and the same thing with the... Uh, I would suggest send a letter, like I've said many times, to the person in particular. Don't send it to me. Send it to whoever you want. Is it uh, Thomas is one, Taylor Thomas or somebody? Yes. Send it to that person in care of our box number. We'll send it on. Send a stamp, self-addressed envelope, always. Okay, here's another one from Sarah Charlie of LaSalle, oh. Ontario. I heard Lonnie Anderson wants to go out with Dr. Jerry Graham. Please, please give me first chance. I would even give up singing for him. Well, this is the girl that has been writing in a few weeks, and as it happens, we know her. We would do anything in the world to make you give up singing. We're going to work on getting Dr. Jerry Graham a date with you, Sarah. Just hang on. Welcome to another edition of Graham's Gallery. Our guest here today is one of the most successful promoters in the country who has recently aligned himself with the WWA. Mr. George Cannon, who predominantly promotes the country of Canada, but also has some interest in the United States. George Cannon, I'd like to welcome you to Graham's Gallery. Well, first of all, Jerry, let's get one thing straight right off the bat. It's not my pleasure to be here. I was asked to come out here simply because 
You don't have the proper people coming on here telling you exactly what you are. I know you for well, exactly I know what, I what am. you are. I know what I am. I'm a very successful manager, for example. But let's take a, a good example. Bulldog Don Kent. You used to manage him before he became a promoter. He was a mediocre, middle-of-the-card type of a wrestler. I took over his career. Now he's one half of the WWE World Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. He's undefeated. I took the same man and did so much more than you did with him. I think this shows what a tremendously successful manager well, I was manager I am. of Don Kent. I don't like to bring up the past, but I'll tell you something about the past. When I had Don Kent and another wrestler with me as a tag team, we went through the entire world. We were the world champions. We were featured in every big, big city in the world. The same cities I've been in, except I drew more money than you did. Oh, I'm going to tell you something else. Attention. I've been from New York to Los Angeles. I've been to Montreal to Mexico. I've been to the Middle East to Japan to the Far East. I've been everywhere. So don't you ever come on my show no, and try to downgrade me. everywhere, Jerry, is because you've been escaping your creditors. You're a despicable, degenerate person for professional wrestling. You have no business in it. The fact that you can come out here, your elocution is true. You use semantics. You use colloquialisms. You use all these things for people that don't know what you're talking about. But I know you for really the person you are. And I was talking to Ozzy Osbourne and Rowdy Brody Piper who say, and I can't believe this, that you're their hero, that you're the person you look up to because what you are despicable, because you are that degenerate, because you grab a person like Don Kent, put him in front of you, become champions, simply because Don Kent has the attributes of a champion. He has youth, he has ability, agility, strength, stamina, stamina desire, science, the whole damn thing. So don't you come on out here and tell me what the hell you did with Kent. Because you know that's baloney, I know it's baloney, all the wrestling people out there who know anything about wrestling know it's baloney. You can spew off of the mouth, Kent, and you can spew off the mouth, Greg, but you're not going to come across like you should. Well, I'm going to tell me about that. I'm going to tell you something. It takes a lot of guts to come for an overbearing, big-mouthed old man to come out here. It's good for an old man to get tough. A man that's past his prime. A man that wouldn't have a chance if I were to take off this coat right now and smack you. Why don't you take off the coat? Let me tell you something. Because I am a Christian gentleman. You're a Christian gentleman. You're a Christian gentleman. And this is a talk show. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm a Christian. I want to apologize to the fans. I'll tell you something. 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 I'll for you, I could do it tomorrow night. That's what I think about you. I've been ill. I've been sick. I've had phlebitis, vasculitis. I've every human known to humanity. And let me tell you something else. Regardless of all these things, I could go into the ring with you right tonight. I put you down. I pulverize you. I destroy you. I make you the type of person you are, Green. <laughs> what a pleasure this segment is going to be. We have the very eloquent Dr. Jerry Green Jr. with us. And I'm going to ask Jerry a question for a change. Dr. Jerry Green Jr., where have you been? And why are you wearing sunglasses at nighttime? Well, first of all, where have I been? A lot of people got the impression I was retired. Not true. I've been on sabbatical, studying the Gregorian calendar in relation to the vernal equinox. Why do I wear sunglasses? George Cannon, when you're as great as I am, the sun shines on you 24 hours a day. That's it? That's it. What about the brass nuts much? Let me tell you something. Everybody knows how I deplore the Detroit-Windsor area. Everybody that knows me knows how I despise these cheap rickety cars. I have to go to Japan or Germany to buy a proper car. I don't know that in Windsor they got the mindless Canadians. But I'm back in this area for one reason, George Cannon, because you have made it possible for me to have a brass knuckles match with the lowest vermin, worm in the dust excuse for a human being I've ever seen, Chris Carter. Now, a lot of people, they contemplate, why am I on Earth? What is my place in the universe, in the infinities? Chris Carter knows. The answer to that question, you guys, he's at peace with himself, George Cannon. Chris Carter is at peace with himself because a lot of people wonder, why am I here? What am I doing? Chris Carter can say, I have been put here to be beaten regularly by Dr. Jerry Graham. That is my function in life. And I own you, Michigan. When we tape up those fists in a brass knuckle style match that you've so graciously arranged for me to be up there, I am going to take Chris Carter, the spirit of America, dang me with a fork cannon, and I am going to beat him around that building because in a brass knuckles tape fist match, there's no stopping because of blood, there's no disqualification, and let me tell you something, there's people coming from all over to Iowa, Michigan, you think I'm going to a dump like Iowa, Michigan? A one horse one more question. If you were in a place where the sun shines 24 hours, I thought you were in a place where the Sun doesn't shine. Well, Cannon, I'm going to I'm going to go and just say this, Carter. I'm going to be in Ionia, the brass knuckles, and you're going to be beaten like a wet puppy.